Okay, um, welcome. Um, this is going to be uh, hopefully just a quick video. Um, I wanted to show a little bit about what I need you guys to do to set up Overleaf and use Overleaf uh, and also to, to, to set up GitHub. Uh, we didn't get quite to all this stuff, especially we didn't get uh, to GitHub um, on uh, the class this day because of uh, th this week because it was a bit of a short week. So, um, real quickly, um, I am going to be requiring that you use uh, Overleaf uh, so that you can use this LaTeX template which will have all the basic parts uh, that you need to fill in for a standard research um, uh, document, a standard research report, you know, so your abstract, your introduction, uh, your literature review, your methodology, um, your results, and then like a conclusion discussion, right? That, that, that's kind of how we break up the course, is, is we break it up into those six or seven pieces, and I'll have things you have to do for each one of those uh, pieces, okay? So um, you need to create your Overleaf account, and then you need to copy that template uh, make a copy of it and use that uh, template and basically fill it in. I'll show the I'll show this real quickly here. Um, and I want you to I'll show you th some stuff I didn't really talk about in class, but to update some things. And then also I need you to share that back with me so that uh, I can actually see your work on Overleaf as you're doing it. Okay. So um, in our course, um, I have I'll have all these links uh, under content here. Um, so for part one, uh, all the ones here should be here right now. So for Overleaf, you want to you go to overleaf.com. Um, if you don't, um, you know, I assume most people probably don't have an Overleaf account, so you'd have to uh, yeah, register a new account. Uh, you can use your email or, or your Google account or however you prefer. So um, I'll go ahead and use uh, kind of an email address. You have to give a real password. You guys will be able to see what I type in for my password here. but. Uh, but of course you'd want to use a real password. I'll go ahead and delete this count as soon as I get done with it. So, um, um, so anyway, select a, a username and password um, and register it. So um, I'm going to pause here. You do need to um, you know, confirm that and get in. So as soon as I come back, uh, I'll have Um, okay, so after you confirm that, you should be able to get into your account. Um, I, there, there is there's some nice premium stuff, but it's pretty expensive, you know. So we're going to just be using the free versions of the account here right now. So um, I'll go ahead and um, fill in the stuff that's asking for. Um, so. Um, so in this case, once you have your Overleaf account, then you're ready to go ahead and copy that uh, project template. So um, uh, what you do is just just click on this, or I'll just copy the link, um, um, and I'll paste it in here. So actually what this will do is this will, uh, uh, that's a link for you to join my project. It'll be a read-only. You wouldn't be able to actually modify this one. Uh, but but now this one here, so, so I've actually got the, uh, it's not really a copy yet, you're just sharing my template of it, right? So if you go back to your home, um, if you go at the things with shared with you, you'll see this now. So what you want to do now is make a copy of this, okay? So now when you make a copy, it will have an actual copy that you can make changes to that will be writable to you. That will be where you'll be doing your report. So we'll make a copy of that. Uh, I would like everybody, I, I didn't say this in class, you, I think you should be able to modify this after the fact. So everybody uh, give your project name in this format. Uh, 595, use your, your like last name as it shows up uh, in class, and then um, you don't have to have, you don't have to have settled on your, your title yet. Um, but this will be the title that will be in your document, right? Uh, so you can later modify the title part. But yeah, have, have the class number and the name. Uh, that'll just help me sort these when I'm um, trying to evaluate the stuff. So, so we'll copy that over. So now, when you've done that, um, if you look at um, uh, you know your projects, if you want to, you can get rid of that shared one now. You won't need it. Although you know, if you mess something up, you can always just recopy that and start over. So. Uh, but yeah, you should see this uh, project now, um, and you can work on it. So, so uh, Overleaf is really just a um, you know kind of a front end for doing uh, LaTeX LaTeX documents, right? So LaTeX is a, a document generation system for making real um, you know documents that are uh, th that are ready for publication in in actual journals, scientific journals, and, and conferences and things like that. So. Um, 
so uh, as I mentioned here, um, um, there's a couple things you, you probably should try to do as well just to show me that you're doing stuff. So there's a couple places where it needs a name. Um, so you should find those um, and put your name in. I think there's just two or three. So just on, on the on the front here, so ultim ultimately at some point you'll pick a research question. You'll have to pick then a title for your project, but, but go ahead and, and change your name here. A little bit of a hint. Uh, I don't know why this doesn't automatically follow. You know, so when you're here, the, the editor's on the left-hand side. The right-hand side is just the render of the LaTeX markup. So, but anyway, if, if you kind of click over here on the left-hand side, you can have the document kind of go to, it doesn't, it doesn't always work, but you can kind of have the document go to where you're at uh, by doing these arrows on the left and right. Um, but yeah, it doesn't always work. So th this first front, patter, front matter stuff is in the, uh, the main document here, so I guess we'll just have to find it. Um, so we'll have to find our um, um, title. So, you know, um, you have to change your title there. But, but go ahead and, and get your name changed in here. So you'll find it doesn't actually, the, it automatically saves your document. If you hit Control S, it actually causes it to recompile, right? So, so it's, everything you type in gets saved, but it'll, uh, it'll, you'll force a recompiler to just recompile the PDF by clicking up here and recompile, right? So the, now we got our name changed. Um, um, there's another one. You do have to read this declaration, understand this. I don't know if I get a chance to talk about this much, but um, but yeah, you know, plagiarism is a serious thing. Um, and if you're not doing your own work in this class, you can get a zero in the class and or um, have uh, you know uh, worse consequences. So so this is a serious thing for the declaration. So let's see if this works. So if I'm on the declaration page. I click on that. Uh, yeah, it's, it's supposed to take you approximately to where this stuff is, right? So, so I, Derek Carter. Actually, there's two places for your name on the declaration here. Carter, uh, this, da blah blah, um, and get, give you consent, right? So, and also, I mean, you know, this this consent stuff is you know serious as well, right? So you are agreeing to to share this. So it's not a a private kind of a project or anything that you're doing here. Alright, so good. Those I think those are the only three places where you have a name. So, all right. Um, after you do that, then um, um, go ahead and share it with me. So I'll 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 be able to then uh, see the work that you do on Overleaf.com. Okay. So to do that, you use the share button here, um, and then just share it with. You need to use my my uh, official email address. Derek Carter at tamuc.edu. All right, that'll allow me. Um, I'll get a, a message on my Overleaf account. I'll be able to um, see that in my shared, you know, um, uh, shared projects that are shared with me um, and do stuff with you on that. All right, so that's basically it. That's what you need to do for like the first week here for the Overleaf, overleaf part. Secondly, um, um, I'm really going to be looking in GitHub for, uh, you need to be making regular commits. This is where I'm going to be keeping track of the history of the stuff you're doing and keeping track that you're actually making progress every week, every day, okay? So I, I suggested this in class a little bit. Uh, there, there, uh, for this class, I'm going to have at least a minimum. I mean, everything that I do when I evaluate you for the different parts of this course, one, one part of my evaluation is I'm going to look at your GitHub and see... You know, did I did, did you give me evidence that you were working this week or this two weeks for this part of the course, right? And the evidence is, did you make regular commits, right? At a minimum, if you're not making at least two commits a week, um, that's right away. There can be points off for that, right? I suggest uh, for a project like this, you need to be working like an uh, set aside an hour, a regular hour every day, five days a week. I mean, you should take the weekend off. You know, you shouldn't work seven days straight but five days a week at least an hour and every day when you do on that hour do something and at least make one commit right so that's a that's kind of a minimum you should be trying to work this pretty much every day for a little bit and making a commit right so then then you'll that will be a way that you'll be guaranteed you'll, you'll make good progress people make faster progress if they commit to doing that, that on a regular basis then trying to, you know, do it all in eight hours in, in one day or something like that, all right? So anyway, so you do need to, if you don't know how to use Git, you're going to have to learn how to do that. Uh, I'm not going to show installing Git. 
and you ner- need to learn the basics of cloning the repository um, and then sharing and then commit making a commit and pushing your commit back to github so i'll show all those right here just the, the very basics of doing that so uh, back to our my leo online there's a, another link uh, which will uh, allow you to accept um, 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 a uh, so, uh, just give me a second i'm gonna Okay, uh, let me try that again. So uh, when you click on this link, I'll, I'll copy and paste it again um, for the GitHub repository. Uh, you, you do need to have a GitHub account. Oops, I did the wrong one. Sorry there. You, you do need to have a GitHub account before you do this. Um, so first create a GitHub account if you don't already have one, uh, and then click on this link. Um, um, basically, and it should ask you to select uh, your name, right? So select the correct one. Um, it looks like a lot of people have already done this, so uh, at, at the point I've done this here. So, um, and then uh, go ahead and uh, accept the, the the assignment. Okay. So this will actually create a repository you, repository for you in GitHub. All right. Um, so uh, from this, then the basics you need to learn how to clone the repository. Um, so uh, the way I do that, you'll have to have uh, you know have a SSH key set up correctly. Uh, if you have your SSH keys set up correctly, um, you can copy the SSH URL. So I'll go ahead and copy that, uh, and then I'll make a, a clone of the project here. So um, I usually do it in a subdirectory called repo, repos, which I'm already in, um, and I'll do the git clone command. With that URL, so this will clone it into a subdirectory called 591 class project. So the same name as your repository. If you want to, you can change that. Um, um, uh, um, I'll go ahead and leave it uh, like that. So, um, so that that'll create a directory on your system um, with all the with basically this project template with all these files in here. Uh, we can go ahead and look uh, in that directory here. So let me go ahead and. Um, um, show you that. So if I open up my file browser on my system, hopefully you can see that here. Um, yeah, if I go to my repos subdirectory, the directory where you clone it into, you'll have that directory in there. Um, and this is, you know, just a suggestion. You might actually have to add some things here. So, so in fact, if I had been thinking ahead, I probably would have added a, another directory for um, for um, slides or for um, presentations, so that you can put your pres- your presentation slides in. Okay, so uh, but but we do need to get your uh, your your uh, LaTeX documents into the docs directory. So um, there is a report. I uh, haven't hadn't hadn't thought about that. Uh, I, actually, yeah. So uh, I'll go ahead and make the decision here while I'm thinking about it. Uh, let's use the report subdirectory. So we'll think of this as your research report, um, and we'll put your research report document in here. Okay. So the way to do that, um, so um, you know, um, I've accepted Git. I already had it installed. I didn't show you how to do that. Uh, I should have probably added a bullet point here. You also have to create a GitHub account, and you have to set up your SSH key. And I just showed you cloning it from the command line. Um, and you need to learn how to make commits and push them back to your 595 project repository. So, the um, uh, the, the workflow for um, 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 getting the any any work that you do. So I'll go back to my Overleaf document here. So remember, um, I had made a few changes already, right? So we we I put my name in here, right? Um, I could have made some others. So I could have I could maybe. Um, um, uh, change the uh, title, for example. Example. Let's, let's pick a title. So, um, uh, the performance of red, black trees in Java. Something like that, right? So, I'll go ahead and change the title. So, I made a, I made a couple of, of changes here, right? So um, there are ways to link Overleaf to like a Git repository or to GitHub, 
But yeah, those do cost money. So as far as I can tell, we do have to kind of do this by hand. So again, what, I'm, what my suggestion is when you're working on your document, work on your document on Overleaf. When you're done for the day, go ahead and, and bring it down into your repository and make a commit of those files. So the way to do that is if you go to the menu, um, you can download the source and the PDF from there. You can also download the P, just the PDF from here as well. Um, but if you want to download all these source files, which is what I need, uh, go ahead and download the source. Um, so we'll get a, a zip file, right? So download the zip file. Go, I'll go ahead and download the PDF as well. So I, um, so I have both the um, um, a zip of the source and the PDF file. So uh, if I go to my downloads subdirectory where I just downloaded these two, um, I should see you know I've got my 595 PDF file and my 595 zip file which has all the source files in it. So I'm just going to um, copy those um, into the uh, into my repository reports directory. Right? And you shouldn't unzip it. I don't really want you to, to commit the zip file so I want to actually have all the files in here so I'll, I'll extract here. Uh, oh, um, I'd rather not have this in a subdirectory so um, you should go ahead and when you extract that um, um, put these back up into, they should end up in the reports directory here, okay? So you have to figure out how to zip that up correctly, but uh, it should look something like this, and you don't need the zip anymore. But after you unzip it, you should have your chapters and figures from Overleaf um, uh, in here. Um, I thought there was like a, some figures, I thought there was some figures on uh, Overleaf. Um, let me check something real quickly here. So, um, yeah, there's some PNGs, so I don't know if those went missing. But yeah, all those files should be in there. Hmm. Uh, we'll have to check that out later. But, but anyway, so once we have those in there, um, and you're ready to make a commit, so there's, there's the PDF again with my changes, my wonderful title and stuff, uh, you can go ahead and make a commit and push it the normal way that you would do. So I would normally do it from the command line. So I would go to my um, um, direct my repository directory. Um, and um, I would go ahead and just uh, add all those files, stage all those files, make a commit and then push it. So. Um, so in this case, only the PDF, uh, all the files of the chapters were modified. So there's a new su new subdirectory being added. Yeah, I don't know why the figure didn't come down. I'll have to check that out. So. Um, so I staged them. I'll make a commit. I'll add a name to the. Uh, um, uh, research report. And we'll push it, right? So, uh, anyway, so, 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 you know, this class isn't really about tools, and I hope most people have already done some stuff with Git, but, but I am going to be requiring that, um, if you have it, that you learn the basics of Git so you can do that much. So you can uh, create a commit and you can push it. So on my end, when I um, uh, look at it, um, I'll be able to look at your repositories because um, the repositories you create from that link, I have read-write access, access to them as well, so I can um, actually see the work as you're doing it um, and uh, you know see exactly what you were doing line by line, right? So since I added new files, there's a bunch of things, but uh, as you make incremental commits, I can go in here and see the differences of, of what you're working on in that commit and that kind of stuff. So, um, okay, so that's it for this video. I hope it didn't didn't go too long, uh, but uh, we will probably cover uh, a lot of this. We'll go over this again uh, next week, uh, but that's it. You should get started on those, and I will see you guys again um, in our next class session.